Hey there, welcome to Hashtag with Nabuzi Chiwanuka. This is a place where we help you unravel social constructs, discuss self-development in line with mental health, emotional well-being, and everything in between that directly or indirectly affects us in the millennial world around us. If you are hearing my voice for the first time and are the kind of person who is not scared of being a better version of yourself even if it requires you to contradict who you were 24 hours ago, consider this your virtual home. I am your host, Namguzi Chwanuka, a lawyer, founder, stroke team lead of Equate Foundation, an addict and lover of insightful conversations and a professional unraveler of social constructs. Among the seven reasons why you should tell the truth, Shape Your Happiness suggests that telling the truth is important for everyone to grow. Our guest this week is Kagwa Maiga. He is an arts and culture journalist, among other things, and to me, he is a professional table shaker. He uses all the skills and knowledge he has learned in the arts world to ask artists and contributors to the arts industry to do better. In the episode, we are talking art, journalism, his journey into it, and everything in between. Kagwa is blessing us with the information he shares in this episode, and I cannot wait for you to tap into those blessings. So without further ado, let's get into it. Andrew Kagwa, my guy, shaking the tables all the time. And then people come and tell you, please, these tables have expensive <laughs> Man, <laughs> why don't you respect people's tables, my <laughs> No, like, let, let's say at times I don't even see the table. <laughs> <laughs> Why you just run into things? <laughs> no, times you you're thinking like you like let let me can't say what can't can get cutting. Oh, uh, you call you know, cutting. Yes, cutting. <laughs> uh, you see, someone once asked me, "Do you know that you're going to trend?" And truth is, I never know that I'm going to trend. Mo- most of the time. At what point did someone ask you that? What did they see? It wasn't even anything controversial. Do you remember when Bobby Wine had uh, that online show? In Sasage. In Sasage Munyomba. Yes, I don't remember the Do, During, uh, it, it was during. You know, um, I'm still got in the goosebumps. Eh? Uh-huh. I get me, uh, get me is. So, so <laughs> in Sasage Munyumba was a big deal, and it was. Um, I remember pitching the story to one of the editors, and because uh, it was during the lockdown, the society pages in Monitor had been removed. So mm. we did not have society pages. Nothing was happening, really. Yeah. And then you're thinking, but we can have an exemption because this has happened. Of course, the people, the powers that be, did not think the same. And uh, I tried to talk to the website people, the people that run the website. And I think they had uh, gotten a, a, what, what they would call a review. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I what they would call a review. So, so I was thinking. But you wouldn't uh, see it as a review. <laughs> I, I thought there was more to be said. Right. There was more to be right. said. One, right. it was the very first time Bobby Wine was performing. He had not performed like since 2019. Co- Only? Yeah, yeah. Because you remember in actually no, it's no, not no, even no, 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 not 2019. It's a lot late. He had it's not performed before. for a very long time. Mm. Yeah. And uh, in my mind, I was thinking this should actually be a big deal like yeah like this is the first time this guy is performing and he's performing at a time most of his friends cannot perform (laughs) that's right but they were not seeing it like that and i think it's also because i did not get a lot of time to explain why i thought about it this way that's because we were communicating through phones most of the times when we were pitching these things because it was like in the middle of the lockdown that that's the first lockdown so i'm like okay so I write a review and I look at it for a day or two yeah. and then I come and I do an alert, a, a long post alert. Like yeah, there is something I wrote and uh, well, I did not get the time to submit it so I'm going to put it here. And so Kaz Kasozi comes and comments and is like, bring it, we are going to read it. <laughs> uh, so I put it up and she's what did not happen with that post because i remember someone came and was like and then you hear people calling themselves bloggers <laughs> and, oh yeah and i think it was after slightly after i think someone had represented bloggers i think to to ask for relief or something yeah, yeah. yes 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 so yes, someone yes. comes and is like and then you hear people calling themselves <laughs> bloggers they're not doing anything <laughs> so so but the, they couldn't do the same thing when they just gotten relief <laughs> <laughs> really? 
you want them to as you want them to vomit the money <laughs> <laughs> so so i got to notice it was actually a very beautiful review Literally, oh, very many yourself. months after that. Look at yourself. <laughs> I, I noticed. <laughs> yes, I, I noticed it was a good review. Very many months after that, because I read it again and I was. Oh, like, you went back yes. to me. Oh, you have those moments yeah, when you go on, when you pretend you're not the one. Yeah, you just yeah. found so, so you, you just find something it. like this person is good. Right. Yeah, this was fine. <laughs> so, so, but yeah, it, it's after I wrote that that someone asked me like, "Do you ever notice you're actually going to go viral?" Truth is, I don't. That Aren't you used? Uh, uh, well, you see, whenever you go, vi there are very many times you go viral and most people are not on your side. Uh, I've been <laughs> in many of those situations. Right. You, you go viral and people are not on your side. For that, everyone was literally on my side and some people had not seen the show. So it's like reading, it's like they read and they literally saw the show through mm. the writing. And... Um, one, like I said, people had failed to find space for that review. Right. So this post goes viral, like you're looking at comments, they keep coming in. I don't know how many people shared it, how many people copied it and pasted it on their website. There were too many. Well, that's so, annoying. So, so that's when I, I, I received a, a call from the guy doing our website and it's like, hi, can we publish your story? Oh and my I'm goodness. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> you can't oh take my this. god. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Yeah, so no, so no, 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 Truth no, no. is I never know that I'm going to go viral. Like most of the times I'm just writing because I feel like this information needs to be out there. Actually most of the times I, I, I write those long posts because I believe the information should be out there. And uh, at times the sarcasm is intended. <laughs> and sometimes it's not? Sometimes it's not. Really? It, it's totally accident. Okay. Really? It, it <laughs> really? <laughs> uh, really? Or maybe no, it's no, just in your DNA uh, that sarcasm is you. You, you see, someone, someone actually said that I'm naturally mean, <laughs> that I don't even intend it. Someone told me that they were going to bring their book to you for review and you had trashed a book at that time when he when he was preparing himself to bring the book to you mm -hmm. he landed on a review about a book he loved so much mm -hmm. he had loved the cover art but you were trashing it so he was like let me keep my stuff <laughs> i'm not going i'm not going to be embarrassed by this <laughs> one i think i actually know the was uh, the, uh, <laughs> okay in the past i think i've been told by uh, no i can't even count but i've been told by very many people like yeah I, I wanted to give you my film and then i saw a review you did about someone and i changed my mind about it <laughs> i've also had those ones who have told me they wanted me to read their books and then they changed their minds about it what does that make you feel <laughs> Please bring your book. <laughs> Do you promise no, to no, be a but, better but, but, person? But uh, <laughs> I still think I'm I'm a better person either way. Cause uh, <laughs> there are many things I've said that have hurt people, That's and right. uh, people have said I'm very insensitive about their process, but. I do not want to be sensitive about your process because I do not really think a person that reads my story in the Daily Monitor thinks about the fact that I was very hungry by the time I did it. Oh. Uh, the person that goes out and buys a newspaper is spending to see well-written stories. They do not really care if these journalists actually got paid or not. You see that noise that was made and everyone was talking about the 50k? Mm -hmm. I was shocked. Mm -hmm. I was like, how? So we see these guys flaunting a good life on TV. Mm -hmm. Can I tell and you something about that 50K? Tell, tell me, tell me. 50K for, 50K is enough. 50K is enough. Remind me, was this 50K, 50K something yes, it, it daily? It was 50K daily. It's daily? Yes, 50K uh -huh. is enough for a blonde. 
But you see where you're going now. No, let me tell you this. <laughs> One, you're being paid 50K mm-hmm. to be on TV for two hours. You're not on TV for two hours alone. You're on TV for two hours with a group of other people. That's right. That group of other people are more knowledgeable than you. They are bringing the information. Probably you're just adding, yeah, that's true. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You think you're a I'm I'm, I'm just being (laughs) realistic here. You're you're bringing your, oh, my God, and well, your well-polished nails and good smile stilettos and the rest but there are people that have actually done research about these things and they do know much much more than you actually do and you're getting 50k for that you're getting 50k for telling people about Cardi B's new tattoo which people may be even know because they have internet so and you're getting you 50k that that for that and plus that 50k you're getting a transport allowance and you're getting there's a lot more you're getting a wardrobe allowance oh the media covers that for tv oh i thought people just pick their own stylist or something like that for tv at least as far as i remember and that as far as i think is uh 2021 and this came out in 2020 2020 so I didn't know about that stuff. Like 50k is enough. That's why when when I did my post in relation to that, because you see people trying to. I didn't see it. M- most people try it. to make themselves politically correct. The people that should actually be complaining are the people that gather the news, because because since the people that gather the news are not in showbiz and everything, they do not have a clothing allowance. I actually heard that the ones that collect or gather the stories get less. Yes. The people that are like gathering Like being in the, the field news, with, sh- with, with, with bullets running over your head? They, they... And I had... What did I hear? Correct me. I might be wrong. But I, had, I could have heard someone say something like, something in thousands? Like 2,000 or something? Let me tell you, they are people that are being paid uh, 5,000 shillings for a story. And those people are in the How? same field. Uh, okay, that, that five thousand. That's that, does that also come with a transport allowance? There's, okay, you 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 write a voucher, but that's the the different the media houses matter. Where like I don't know matters. I don't know if some media houses <laughs> actually have a voucher to cover your transport, but again, when they are covering your transport, they are, they are measuring your transport in distance. Trans the transport allowance TV presenters get here. Yeah, those people that usually at times just come and they're like, yeah, now coming up next <laughs> is uh, <laughs> the allowances those people get is yeah. kind of fixed. Those are people that could have a transport allowance of about thirty k a day, and they are looking at them leaving home and coming to the workstation, and no one is asking them like, okay. How far is your home? But yeah. they're getting their 30k allowance. When a journalist that's collecting news actually goes out to pick their transport refund, they'll be like, okay, what did you go? You went to Chireka. Oh, Chireka, let's see what what our list says. Because newspapers and uh, media houses usually have that list of places. Like, yeah, this place, this much. This place, this much. So you went to Chireka and um, you're imagining your offices. How do they measure this, this, this? Are they, is it because, is it, is it reliant, is it reliant on, on how much taxis cost to those places? At times taxis and at times borders, but it's usually an ambiguous figure. Mm-hmm. So someone will come up with the, like Chireka, if you're in Namuongo, you could find that your Chireka has about 8k. But mind you, there is a presenter who is going to leave home and come and live with 30k allowance, transport allowance, regardless of whether that day their boyfriend dropped them. dropped them or their father dropped them, they will have that allowance. So for me, that's why I was mad, because that whole thing did not present the entire story. The people that had to be complaining, the people that were worth complaining, were the journalists that go out and collect the news and because you see i've worked with these girls before yeah these presenters i've worked with them i've done interviews for them because 
these are people that will see a jazz artist and they do not have a single question towards the jazz artist. And the camera person will come and will be like, Andrew, you work with Daily Monitor. I'm a camera person for NTV. That makes us brothers because of <laughs> NMG. Yeah. Please come and interview this guy for me. Don't worry, you're not showing your face. You hold the mic, you go and interview the artist. And after this girl comes and I, that's how it was. It was cool. We had fun. Oh my God, the drinks. Oh, the drink. And then they get the audacity to actually come out and they're like, I was paying 50K. Like, <laughs> like you're so lucky you're being paid for doing things you don't even understand. Ouch. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh my god, my god. We started, we started differently, man. We started on a better note. We, I, I asked if you're going to be a better person. No, I'm, 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 I'm going to be a better person. But, but yeah. So, so like, I think at times the truths, the hard truths need to be told. Oh, yes. And uh, to be one told. thing I hate about social media at the moment is that people are trying so hard to be politically correct. Thank you so much. So, because I remember when... It, it's, it's, it's a lot of tiptoeing there. Yeah. Because at any minute, you don't know whose toes you're going to step on. Yes. Like, no, you don't say that. No, you can't say it like that. You can't be yourself. Because the, the time I came out and talked about those girls, and I even talked about the number of people, because I even mentioned camera people that have asked me, producers that have asked me to do interviews. Like... Let me tell you, each and every TV in Uganda that runs an English entertainment show, be it NBS, mm -hmm. NTV, Urban TV, I've done an interview for all of them. I've been at art galleries. You know, there are some art exhibitions that have been very well marketed, and they send a girl there with a producer, and she has no idea of what's going on. She's seeing paintings, she's seeing <laughs> artists, and they totally do not have an idea of what's going on. And yeah. the producer sees you and is like, Andrew must know what's going on. They come to you, you do an interview for them. And as you're finishing, someone else is waiting. You go and do an interview for them. No. Do they give you some of the money? No. So, so why are you so doing, you do, you're running a no, charity no, foundation? No, no, like, uh, background, like background. You, see, you see, when I love art, <laughs> yeah. uh, and uh, I'm one of the people that believe that the moment we have bad reports or, or the moment we are not doing enough when it comes to the way we are covering art, mm -hmm. uh, we are going to create a very uninformed audience oh, yeah. which will oh, yeah. not help yeah. our artists to grow. Because right now I believe one of the reasons why the film industry is pushing itself and why people are trying to work in, a, in better ways or to produce better things mm -hmm. is because I made very many people uncomfortable. And the more you make people uncomfortable and you're like, so what exactly was this person looking for? Why was this person here? The more, the more you make them uncomfortable is you're empowering the audience to know more and because That's the right. audience knows more, they, demand better. they start to demand better. Mm -hmm. So when I go to a, an event that I know I understand very well, and I see people struggling to report about that same event, most of the times I will try to help them because I know... Wouldn't they feel like you're overbearing? I could leave you to cover it yourself <laughs> and you still fail to have a story. Oh God. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> saying it so politely so softly <laughs> is this something that you wanted to do uh, six year old Maiga what did you want to be when I was six years old uh, there are many things I wanted to be one of them was to be a truck driver oh what and was interesting about truck drivers because it, we, we, we used to stay in what you would call an estate Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the smallest houses, the person that lived there was a truck driver. And uh, he spent much of the day in a vest. And he was literally always home. <laughs> and then he had the biggest car around. <laughs> <laughs> my, so what part my, did you want? My, my dad used to work with uh, 
I think it was foods and beverage. So he didn't really have a car. They used to drive him around. Mm -hmm. But in a car that was smaller than the truck. <laughs> so, so like, I like the part that this guy did not go to work, like, most of the times. <laughs> and then he had the biggest car around. Like <laughs> <laughs> you are literally trashing your father's job. No, like, in, my, in my mind at that time, it was like, this guy has the biggest car around. And... <laughs> He doesn't do anything. He doesn't seem to be doing anything. <laughs> and you wanted to do that. I, I, so I, I, I later learned that, that okay, not, not, a, not when I was six, of course, when you grow up. Uh -huh. I, I learned, like, okay, they actually don't own these cars. Oh, look at yourself. <laughs> oh they they don't goodness. own these cars. They, they're not theirs. They're ah. doing a job. <laughs> And from truck driving, where did you go? So, so from truck driving, I wanted to be a rock artist. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, I, I wanted to be a rock artist for, oh, for that one for a long time. For a long time. For how, a long how time. far back was this? I think after wanting to be a truck driver, when I get to senior one. Mm -hmm. Wait, you kept that dream for that long? Yes. <laughs> So when I, when I get to senior one, yeah. senior one, I uh, had started finding my voice around art and everything. So for senior one, I want to be an artist, specifically rock. Why wow. rock? I, I used to like Avila Vin. I, I still like her. Mm -hmm. And geez, you cannot imagine how a rock artist who is actually female can have a lot of influence on you. Like, Avril had a lot of influence on me. I used to wear skinny shirts because of Avril. And I uh, started wearing bangles because of Avril. Oh my goodness. I think I was almost painting my nails black. Wow. Yeah, so I used to listen to... So influence can, that, can go that deep so, yeah. for a child? Yeah. So I badly wanted to be an artist, but a, a rock artist specifically. I love music. But I never went as far as feeling like I had to be like. I don't okay, know. I think the, I think the, we sort like of the thing about me and music. Okay, I've I've grown up singing. Uh, when I was a child, I think I do not even know how I did that, but I memorized literally Philo Rutaya's entire catalog. Ooh. Yeah. So I've been singing since i was a child but then you start graduating from singing one person songs you start adding on other people's music michael jackson mm -hmm. i think my brother used to listen to a lot of 112 so i don't I know if you know 112. 112. ah jeez <laughs> <It's> an <laughs> r&b <laughs> group that I've was managed by uh, pdd oh and uh, his bad boy I've never heard of so it. So I listened to a lot of 112. Um, listen to guys like Nex, RL, Genuine. I know, Asha. I know Genuine. I know Asha. But <laughs> yeah, the other two? Uh, what two? Jenny those? Aiko, Marcus oh, yeah. Stone. Those are, those are ah, yeah. so, so anyway, uh, I, I listened to a lot of R&B and so I started picking up those influences. Funny thing, I still listen to all those guys up to date. Like when... when most of the times when I'm home on Sundays, I'm usually listening to R&B from, from the 90s to the 2000s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I listen to all those. And then somewhere around the way, I, I land on rock music. That's through Rick D's and the Weekly Top 40. Wait, do you know? Oh, no. Okay, that was like... That was like a car advert in yeah, on like a certain the, radio. I don't, yes. I don't remember which so, radio. So, so, I think I, I think Rick Dees was on Capitol around 2001. Surely I was in P3, I didn't know those things. 2001 to, <laughs> I don't know, 2000 what. So, like, we used to listen to the top 40. Like, now these are my That was on the elders. weekends. Yeah, the weekends. So now these are my elders kind Influence. of influencing my test. My brother was the one listening to those things. But you see, the thing with uh, Rick Dizzy's, it wasn't just hip-hop and R&B. I didn't even know that was the word. 
I just when you said it, I, I had the I was like the rhyme is familiar, but I didn't know what they were saying. So he had more than R and B and hip hop. He had rock music. Like this, he had a lot of rock music on it. So rock music would be on top forty. Yes. Top forty in Uganda. No, Rick Dees was um what do they call it? It was a syndicated show from the U.S. Ah, uh, just like this thing. What was that guy's name? Ryan Seacrest. Yeah. Yes. Mm, okay. So, so like they had a lot of rock music, and I think those were the finest years of rock and roll. Cause that's when Nickelback came out. Like you know Nickelback. No. Wait. <laughs> yeah, wait. <laughs> <laughs> the shock. <laughs> so that's when Nickelback came out. That's when uh, Linkin Park was. I know Linkin Park, but still uh, it's because of my brother. Yeah, uh, it's the time I think called Play Maroon Five. I know those ones. So so all those guys <laughs> kind of came up at that time and and then there was Avril. Now the thing with Avril is that I first see Avril performing at a Geneva G8 something. I think it was one of those UN things. How did I end up watching a UN thing? <laughs> <laughs> I don't that's remember. That's like 13 years of age. So, like you're on TV and then she comes to, to perform Skinny Boy and tame. <laughs> like that woman had energy and then she always came wearing a tie on a shirt. Like she's wearing a shirt and then there is that hanging tie and like that, that was, was hot for you that was hot <laughs> so i was this. in for everything avril did wow the very first time i bought an artist poster it was an avril Lavin poster yeah so after was it like a crush no no I don't think it was a crush. Okay, maybe we, was, we, I mean, maybe we can categorize the crushes now. Artistic crush. Maybe. Wow. Maybe. Because I literally saw myself do the things I really did. Like, wow. So that's, that's when I started listening to a lot of rock and roll. Because of Avril. And then? And... From you wanting to be land, a rock land, artist. Land. So how long, to, to how long be, did that last? I wanted to be a rock artist until... You trying to count? Hmm. No, no, I'm not counting. <laughs> but I'm remembering that there was a time I, I, I noticed, like, maybe this whole music thing doesn't work. But I think I wanted to be a rock artist until, until I noticed rock can't work in Uganda. And then I was thinking, maybe I can just be an artist. In that <laughs> <laughs> like you just stripped all the categories. In that moment when you wanted to be a rock artist, was there anyone who asked you what you wanted to be? Yeah. <laughs> and then you told them you wanted to be a rock artist? No. Why? Uh, because what were you telling them? I didn't think I was telling them. I think they were telling themselves things and then I would go with what they told themselves. Because, um, one, I went to a lot of schools because I would kind of get expelled. Yeah, okay, kind of. At times, I yeah, I, I say kind of because at times it wasn't like yeah, you're expelled, but it was <laughs> it like a, a soft, a soft expulsion. <laughs> They're like, yeah, he's he's among the best in class, but, but uh, we are asking him to repeat. What? And then of course you're going to be like like no we cannot do this and <laughs> you go so at times there were soft explosions oh so they would give you they would hand you something you would not accept yes they're basically giving you an option to leave yes whoa so <laughs> but you see it it's not it's not like i was stubborn by the way what were like you I, doing? I don't think i got my explosions because i was like yeah he led a strike no i did not what were you doing uh one when for instance when i was expelled from the seminary <laughs> that's what made me laugh i was shocked <laughs> i was shocked to know that you're next seminary <laughs> yes when, when when i was at the seminary and i i was very curious mm. uh 
Seminary, want... is that like for your secondary? Yes. Which class was that? When did you senior join? Senior one and senior two. Senior one is when you discover a real and you were in the seminary. And you wanted, to, at some point, you wanted to pay a for a friend. You had to leave. So, so, so the thing is, I was very curious. Yeah. Naturally, I was. Uh, one, it was the very first time I was in a space where, where you had your own Bible, two of them. Why did you need two? One was in Luganda, one was in English. Okay, the one in Luganda wasn't a Bible Bible, but it was um, the mass book. Like the the, the, the Yes. So it, it has the readings of like... It's actually not Sunday. the Miso. Gunde. Shitabochomo Christo. Yes. Yeah. So it has readings of uh, Sunday, Mwakacha. Yeah, so, yeah, so yeah. So it's yeah. organized that way. Mm. So like you had to, for the very first time, I, like I had the Bible. So you know, as you're, you're in church, this is the first time you're attending mass and you actually have to listen to it. Because before that, like you would go to church because yeah, you came you with have your, to go there. You came with your elder brother or sister. So like, yeah, we have to be here. After this, we go home, watch yeah, a lot of yeah, TV. Yeah. This, <laughs> like this, this is just part of the day. Yeah. So that time it, it was like it was happening every day. Ooh. Yeah, like like as a seminary, you you have mass in the morning. Uh, you somehow go to church before you go for lunch. The, there is the. Are you Catholic? I. What are you? talking about oh, yeah so so <laughs> th there is that 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 prayer that happens before lunch where they, the they, angelos. they, they is that the angelos where they were they're like the angel of the lord the, the angel of the lord yes. yes yeah so so that so like a lot was happening now i think i was getting fed in in, in excess <laughs> So there's too much information for yeah, you to so, digest. So I started asking myself things and of course you cannot really go around asking fellow students. So one time I think it was during mass I put up my hand. Oh uh, I wanted to ask a question and Was it during the preaching? Yeah, during the preaching. Had you ever seen anyone put up their hand? No. <laughs> no. And and it wasn't premeditated. It wasn't like, yeah, we'll once do it. Or oh, uh, uh, so I was just and I was like, but but that thing he has just said, like, I I don't really get it. Oh yeah. So <laughs> Oh god. <laughs> so I put my hand up. <laughs> Oh my goodness. And then the guy looks at me and... Um, he must have been confused. So I think he's like, what the hell is wrong with this person? But I keep my hand up. <laughs> and then? And then one of the student leaders comes and is like, we, we, we don't ask questions, we don't put our hand up. Wow. So put it down. Whoa. But I still managed to find the priest to ask him what I wanted to ask him. Now the problem is that at that time truly I did not speak a lot of Luganda. Mm -hmm. right? Like I, I know right now people say that, that they rarely see me speak Luganda but today I feel like I speak a lot of Luganda. Like <laughs> I speak a lot of Luganda. Like I even try to, like I speak a lot of Luganda. Yeah. Those days I did not speak a lot of Luganda so my Luganda was really bad. So I ask him a question and uh, he tries to explain, but I think I push him furthermore with another question and more questions. And then his English kind of gave up, did not like that. So boom, I had created first enemy <laughs> in school. Wow. <laughs> wow. For being inquisitive, for you, yeah, so, so for you wanting to understand. Yeah, and then and then besides that, I kind of wanted to speak Luganda more, so I could. Oh, you noticed that there is something that you lack. Yeah, so I could be trying out Luganda with people, 
and you know with schools so you didn't you didn't speak luganda back at home we did <laughs> i do not know why mine wasn't so good no i remember why it wasn't good so it, it was a whole story when i joined boarding school and then when i went because you see i had been to different schools but uh, most of them I did not spend a lot of time in schools. I don't remember being in a school for more than two years. Whoa. So I kept changing schools a lot. But in the course, when I realized people used to think people that spoke English were intelligent. Oh my goodness. And when I joined a boarding school for the very first time, I was very short and tiny and I was afraid of being, being bullied. bullied. So when I noticed that people got intimidated by English, oh, that was your coping uh, mechanism. Uh, I, I, I was like, ha. Ah. <laughs> you hid in English. And it served me. When I joined, uh, when, when even when I was in secondary, I continued weaponizing English even with teachers, and it wow. always worked. So that's one of the reasons why my Luganda never got better. It's not Luganda English. <laughs> Yeah, it, it did not look <laughs> under. <laughs> because uh, I, I was weaponizing wow. English. You were focused Yes. Uh, on English. Yeah, I was focused on English. I, I was very, very much focused and deliberate. It's very interesting how you pull that out. I wouldn't think of it. I really wouldn't. Like, someone can hide in that? No, because I noticed most, especially when I went to the seminary, because you see, the seminary is, is a place where you find very, very modest people. So right. when I joined the seminary, I was coming from Chisubi boys. <laughs> I, I could say I was coming from a place of privilege. Chisubi boys, that's Donozio? Yes. Oh, you were my neighbor at some point. Uh, so I was coming from St. Denis. You could say it's a traditional school mm -hmm. and it's neighboring smack. Mm -hmm. we could have actually gotten into SMAC. Two, we were coming from Kampala. Uh, the seminary I went to was St. Joseph's Seminary in Where is that? Nyenga. Oh, That's I thought you went straight to the one in Chisubi. No, I didn't go to Chisubi. We were coming from Kampala. When you go to a place that has very modest students, some came from some village parish where people actually collected a lot of money to, to get, get them, them there. there. Like you're very privileged. You're more exposed than they are. I remember I used to go to the library and I would sit on, on like a pile of weekly news and, and I was reading it alone. Like people looking at me like... They're just looking at you? Like what the hell? Like why, why are you reading, reading news? news? <laughs> it's for adults. So, so like, they, they did not really see, like, why is he reading news? Why is he doing this? So I was more exposed than there. And then I noticed even people that were tougher or that would have wanted to bully you, but they were in a higher class, they would kind of chicken the moment they noticed you were a bit eloquent. Oh. And I used to like speed up the moment I noticed this person is really strong and is really too angry. <laughs> like, a, no, I don't get what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. Like to confuse them oh my with goodness. the language and it always worked. They had to take you out of that system. <laughs> when you joined, when you joined, when you joined the seminary, was there an intention of your parents seeing you as a priest? No. Okay, I I did not know at that time. But the, by the way, this this was my mom because I could say I grew up between families, like I grew up between my father's family and my mom's. My mom used to stay in Kamocha. Mm -hmm. So like how, that's how I managed to see the best of both worlds because trust me in Kamocha, Kamocha was, Kamocha was tight. Yeah. Kamocha was tight, uh, but we would always find ways of making Kamocha better. Cause one, <laughs> the, I remember one time in Kamocha when we were like, ah, uh ah, -uh, they were tired of eating beans, we are going to eat chicken. 
and and the thing about kamocha is that you would find the chicken of the money you wanted but it couldn't chicken as chicken but it's chicken like there was a guy who used to work with yoga chick and you see all the parts that they do not pack because i think when they are packing they usually pack uh the thighs the, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. the, the the best parts so the parts that they don't pack like you would just collect them put them in packs so you would sell them like a thousand two thousand wow so so like you would be like i know today today we don't feel like beans we are eating chicken but then you eat this chicken and it's not chicken and we're like the <laughs> <not thai -ish." laughs> <laughs> like, no chicken in <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so yes i i lived with my mom and uh when i was at chisubi of course whenever she would come to visit me there would be complaints like here yeah, for instance <laughs> we made him sit here and he moved and went sat, <laughs> sat there and then the other time we went to church he moved from the boys side when girls sat with the girls <laughs> of uh, chisubi girls so there were complaints <laughs> always and so i think my mom was like how this person is turning out to be very stubborn mm -hmm. and uh, oh so the seminary was to tell the you. seminary was to tell me only I, for them to fail so so <laughs> so like you see one of these days she was like you see i took you to the seminary and <laughs> all these years later you have dreadlocks just <laughs> you did go to the seminary <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness the things our parents say. <laughs> oh my like, goodness. Just imagine you didn't go there even for, for two years. <laughs> <laughs> so you stayed there for two years? Yes. Oh, you managed okay, to make I, it I, for I two didn't, years? I didn't manage the whole two years <laughs> because somewhere in between I remember serving a suspension. But, but I think, you see, until I joined St. Lawrence, I had trouble with all the schools I went to. So St. Lawrence could accommodate you? I went to St. Lawrence and all of a sudden I found a place where I fit in. Wow. I never got suspended at St. Lawrence. I never got expelled. You weren't breaking rules or they could just accommodate you? It wasn't just about accommodating, but I think, I think at that time they had already seen that maybe they were not supposed to raise us the way our parents were raised. Oh yeah? Because I noticed that when I was at Chisubi Boys, there was a brother that had taught my dad, like... <laughs> same systems. Yeah, same systems. And this is something I think that goes on being personal. I, I believe even people that are taking their children to smack right now, the, the ones that are like... I about mean, you heard Bobby Wine speak. His grandfather had been there. His father, like... The kind yes. of system. But uh, if Bobby Wine had gone to smack, it's very possible that some of the people that taught him would have been at smack right now. Like literally training the son the same way they trained the oh father. Oh my goodness. It, that's just, I had so, never so, thought of so, it like that. So I think when I went to St. Lawrence, finally I found a place that... Because it, it's at St. Lawrence where someone told me that is not a must that you're all going to become lawyers. Atisha said that? Yeah. That is cool. And then he went on to say the most unrealistic jobs you can ever think of. He was like, some of you might become models, DJs, radio presenters. What did that sound like in your ears as a teenager? I, I think... Were you still <laughs> on that Avril dream or had you dropped it already? At that time I wanted to be an artist just an artist just, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> what I wanted class to be an that? artist but i also wanted to be a novelist because i had started writing oh look at that yeah i wanted to be a novelist and an artist i dropped wanting to be an artist when when a ugandan artist stepped on a table that had <laughs> the queen i was like ah <laughs> it had the queen yeah, it had the queen. When was that? Palmer Awards 2004. Oh, never get a car. Yes. What class? So, 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 then I was like, I don't want this. <laughs> uh, I don't want this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You're not about embarrassing yourself. Yeah. Oh so, my. <laughs> uh, I was like, I don't want this anymore. Though I continued singing because, um, there's something I liked about singing. I, I like distorting people's songs, like totally mm, break mm, it apart mm. and just 
sing it in your own way like it's a rap song and then you find a way of using these lyrics and then you're singing them like it's a soul song yeah uh so i i like doing that you no know, some, sometimes i find people that i went to school with and they're like how come you did not become an artist you know, <laughs> how come you're not singing so i enjoyed that whole thing but at that time i was like no <laughs> I don't want this. Can you imagine what made you drop your dream? Let, let me stick to writing. Okay. I wrote until I was in my... Because I started writing for newspapers. I had started writing for newspapers when I was in my primary seven back. Wow. Okay, that, you know how you land on on a box number and you're like, wow, so, so this is a box number. Oh, yeah? Or monitor. And then you write something and then it gets published like wow it and happened. I didn't, wow in but, primary but but yeah but i did not continue with it it's like yeah it happened you you i did not pursue it after that who helped you deliver that no i did myself like i said i grew up between homes <laughs> i grew up between by the way a lot of stuff happened for growing up between homes yeah, like yeah i taught I'll myself a lot about about going around town. I knew how to come from Kamocha, go to town, get a taxi to go to my dad's place, even workplace. Like I, I knew that at a very young age. And also the, there was another fact that my mom started trusting me with money when I was quite young. So she would give me my school fees to go and bank it in primary yes oh at first she would give me the money go with me leave me at the bank and she comes back and picks me what? but then after that she started trusting me enough to actually give it to me to tell me make sure your hand doesn't leave the pocket or it's in this bag make sure you wear it in front of you don't talk to anyone until you get to the bank so wow. by the time i got that to was risky because a kid can be whisked by anything they can carry the child and take and take the whole child and the money <laughs> <laughs> they can take the whole child and the money <laughs> what so by the time i was in this one I, I knew the entire drill of actually getting into a bank at times knowing where the bank slips up because they used to be at the bank like knowing where they are you pick them you feel it and you actually pay your own money and of course that gave me a very very different view about money i think that's the reason why i got my very first account when i was still in, in high school mm -hmm. and i didn't even know what i was going to do with it but <laughs> you know as like you you're around and then you see a woman from crane bank like, she's like yeah you can feel you get an atm and you're like huh i think i need this thing so you feel and you get it. And then you're like, okay. <laughs> what next? What next? <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but uh, it gave me a very different view about money. That I knew how much went into my education oh. at that stage. So did, did that ground you a lot more in school? How, like, did you find education a lot more valuable because of that? Not in that way. Actually, mm -hmm. the things that grounded me were different. Like, you see, coming from Kamocha, my mother was uh, a children counsellor. She was working with a KCC, Kamocha Christian Caring Community, KCCCC. And what happened there is uh, most of the children in the community were not as privileged. Mm -hmm. Okay, even those whose parents were working with the organization, the parents were not taking them to St. Lawrence. So for me, those are some of the things that grounded me earlier on. And then, of course, getting a chance to visit your friends and, and then you're, you're thinking about your home, like here yeah, you're in, in a space of two rooms and then you go and visit your friend and their own space in the home space is bigger than your entire house. And you're like, wow, like, wow, this, this is humbling. Like, actually, you see when people say they are humbled, they are not humbled. <laughs> For me, that's the time I was like, yes. <laughs> I'm humbled. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> so, so for me, those those are the things that that grounded me, and then of course they made me dream bigger. I think I got my very first job in my senior six back. You went out and looked for a job. Yeah, I went out and looked for a job because I wanted to buy my own things. Mm. One. I remember that time my mom wasn't paying for my tuition anymore because she had lost her job so my dad was doing it and I did not want this back and forth you come and ask for everything so I went out and got a job I worked what as job was a, a marketeer I, I wish I had stayed in there because I brought that guy some good plans. <laughs> Were you still <laughs> interested in, in writing at that point? I wrote a book which will never see the light of day. It was a novel. It, it was a novel about guys that escaped from school. and Was it non-fiction? It was fiction inspired by real events. Okay. It was about guys that go out and they have fun. So when they are trying to come back, they notice that one of the people they went with wasn't with them. And so they spend the rest of the night trying to look for this person. And before they know it's day and they are out of school. I, don't, I did not write the ending of that. And I think it's the frustration of trying to find an ending that made me abandon it. I think it's somewhere at home because I wrote that entire book in in a black book yeah so it must be somewhere at home and i think i can find it and i'm like wait what, what exactly was that? <laughs> 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 but it, it had been inspired by real life events but in this situation uh, no girl disappeared mm, mm, uh mm. in this situation the, the girl disappearing is something that came up and was like yeah this could be good for dramatic effect what oh yeah yeah but the real story was we went one time we escaped oh you were actually from, part of it because yeah, i was we, going to ask you how did you know these events we we escaped from <laughs> st lawrence and went for the street jam Oh my god. Like the street jam was a big deal. So we, we escaped and we went for the street jam. Had fun. And as we were going back, we were in a taxi. We noticed that uh, one of the teachers was seated in the back seat. So. Oh my god. This guy kind of kidnaps us, <laughs> takes us to his house, and lets us sleep for much of the day. Let's us come out. We use his bathroom and everything. Let's us mingle with the rest of the school without being noticed. And in our mind, we were like, Jeez, this is the best teacher in the planet and the universe, probably the galaxy. And then did the, the teacher ever talk to you and about? And then the guys started blackmailing us in a weird way. What was like he saying? would he would come in and uh, the entire class was <laughs> shouting, and he comes and. Andrew, so and so and so, tell me who has been shouting. Oh. And you're like, you're like, wait, you wait, you're not doing that to us. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh no! Like he would just walk in and he's like, Andrew, and so and so. Oh no! Don't you see that that compound is dirty? And then you go and clean it without asking questions, and you're like, <laughs> and everyone is like, but. What exactly happened to Andrew? <laughs> like, this is not the Andrew we knew. <laughs> oh my god. Like, this goodness. is the person that used to ask questions that would be like, why me? Oh. Why don't you tell them? Why, like, geez, what is this guy to us? Oh my goodness. <laughs> How long did that last? I think it lasted for a term. Oh my goodness. And he did actually not tell anyone after that. Like, so, so like you'd always look at that guy like he's, you know, he's kind of your savior. So when he told, he tells you to do things like, <laughs> you owe us, you owe you, him so much. Yes. <laughs> oh my god. So that, that was the inspiration behind the story. <laughs> <laughs> so we are seeing you as such a big critic, uh -huh. <laughs> the arts critic. Yeah. Is that something that inspired you to get into that? I like I said I used to sing and I wasn't a bad singer mm. and I'm not a bad singer how do we know that we've not heard you sing 
yeah you've known but i'm not a bad singer Mm-mm. you you can you just, can just leave it at that just say I'm you, a you, singer. you can just have the faith in that <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> we have we have to see the results Andrew. uh let me we see need to, I, could, we need to see I, I, I could i could even pick something that we we used to play with those days <laughs> uh, I, I could just look look through a song and and then but you see I'm, I'm not a bad singer so i know how good singing sounds like mm-hmm. and uh to i do not i do not care about how much time someone invested in their music it has to be good the product has to the be the product good. has to be good the moment you put yourself on that stage uh you're giving me a chance to listen to you so you also have to listen to what i have to say like i never stop anyone from critiquing what i write it's just that when people critique what i write most of the times they go they they just go personal exactly like so <laughs> i i remember the time when you told me they went as far as your family yes yes so someone wasn't happy with the way i critiqued shiba karonji just imagine being being bashed over shiba karonji and her inability to sing which which i could say any person that has an ear for music can i mean it's like bashing me for saying halima namakula can sing mm-hmm. and technically everyone who has an ear for music knows she can't sing so i was like ah this woman can't sing but at the moment she's what we have <laughs> And uh, someone <laughs> went as far as like your parents did not give you enough attention. Now you're trying to look for it by critiquing music. Are you serious? But anyway, it's what not was that like? How did you receive that? I think that? that that was the very first time I felt bad. And truth is, I do not. I could be the person that uses all these words when I'm critiquing people, but I do not go person on people. So every time someone goes person on me. I tell myself one thing I'm not going to attack you mm-hmm. uh but you're dead to me when you're dead to me I will never say anything good about you but neither will I say anything bad about you so you will not exist yeah and so far I've done that to very many people agencies advertising agencies but yeah there is a there is a brand i resurrected after <laughs> that been that been dead to me for yeah. some time they were dead to me and on top of being dead to me i think one of the girls that handled their agency told me at an event that we have our own journalists we invited our own journalists and at that time i was editing scoop mm-hmm. and this event was an event i'm literally a face for a voice for uh an event i i technically write and every person copies what i've written that that was nyegenyege because um i mean i was the very first person that covered nyegenyege oh yeah yeah i was the only journalist that covered nyegenyege in 2015 so when i say i have i'm an authority when it comes to talking about that festival Bingo! it's because <laughs> I was there on the very first day. I remember we came in I came in at about 8 and uh the sound system had refused to work like like wow. the very first nyegenyege was very was very personal for me because it happened a few days after my dad had passed and uh I go to that festival because I wanted to escape one who at home like you know after you've had a loss and you're yeah, all keeping yeah, at yeah, home yeah, yeah. and like i was like i need to get out of this place i need to get out of this place so when i know that festival is cause it had been advertised in our circles mm-hmm. so it gets to that day i pick my small camera i used to have a very small camera then i go to jinja I didn't even know where the new discovery was so I passed that place and went peku jinja like middle of jinja so I'm like when I'm in jinja I will hear music playing oh, somewhere ouch. 
and I'll follow the music. <laughs> Oh my goodness, because I've heard that it's in the forest or something like that. So I read Ginger and walk around Ginger for about two hours and there was no music playing. You thought it was somewhere. like a club? Is no, that what I you envisioned? Yes, and, and uh, no, I didn't envision like it was a club, but I did not envision it was in Jeru, not Ginger. So I go back and look at the map look at the map they had given us and then that's when i noticed it's actually before the dam so i grab a border we go back and then i ask border guys do you know why nyegenyege is happening like they did not know it no it was like it wasn't know. famous then it was let me tell you that time nyegenyege happened and people were even still passing around the, the area where it happens like driving their cars around probably seeing some small thing is happening around like I wonder what that is going on with their life so I read Nyege Nyege and um, the girl that was handling press knew me because the, the very first Nyege Nyege was very intimate it was more of people that come for other Kampala events had come together mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in a place that's far off so I come she gives me my pass and then I cover this thing so for me it was kind of escaping but then i didn't escape enough because this was the same group of people mm -hmm, some mm -hmm, of them mm -hmm, were seeing mm -hmm, me for the mm -hmm, first time mm -hmm. since they had had my dad pass so we get there and they're like oh andrew it's ah, good to ah, see you and then, ah, then it was back yeah, to the to that whole yeah, thing yeah. and they're like ah and then <laughs> and then they're like oh and, and then you look like your dad oh. so so it, it was but it was a very good experience so i go right about it the pictures i used literally i do not want to take credit but very many people started sharing the pictures i shared from nyege nyege because there was one that had a heap of bottles empty bottles you know all companies had refused to to sponsor nyege nyege so they brought they went and bought all beers that were not produced in uganda and those are the beers they oh, were selling. Oh, 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 oh my goodness. <laughs> Everything that was sold at the very first Nyege Nyege was every drink that's called a drink, I think besides sodas. Oh my goodness. All beers that were sold were beers whose brands you had never heard of. So they were beers that and were And people were not. ready to consume what they didn't know? Yes. That, 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 you see, the thing about the first Nyege Nyege is like, it, it was more of a vibe. Like mm -hmm. you, you get there and, and then it, it's a happy mood and all of a sudden you do not care. Cause like, let me check this out, let me check this out. Yeah, there, there was that, 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 there was a gin that was from Japan <laughs> and it was selling out and none of us had seen this thing before that day. <laughs> oh. Because cause even that madness that most of the people now remember the festival for, the dancing in the rain, it started with that. And how it started, like, because the, the instrument wasn't, the, the production wasn't good. It, was, it, it wasn't the best production you could have because mm -hmm. these guys didn't have the money. So they put up a production that was ah, like, yeah. So when it started raining, it went down. And so we went and sat in the shed as they fixed it. So when they finished fixing it, the DJ started playing again. We came back and started dancing. When we came back and started dancing, it started raining again. So we ran away and uh, the music went down. We waited for it to stop. When it stopped and we came back, the thing started raining again. And we were like, what to next? hell, we are dancing in the rain. <laughs> So, <laughs> wow, <laughs> we danced in the rain until the rain went away. The next day, rain decided to start bullying us during day and we're like, to hell with you, we do not care. We danced through the rain and those were the very first pictures of people dancing in the rain. That, that can out. really create formal. And after Nyege Nyege was done and I had done my story and the pictures were online and everything, Literally everyone was calling me to know about this festival. It creates FOMO. By the time someone gives themselves up to the rain, it creates FOMO. They're like, what is here? So when the next Nyege Nyege was happening, literally everyone wanted to be at that place.
place. Mm -hmm. So most of the times when I review things, when I'm talking about, at times it comes down to how much I believe in this thing. Truth is reviewing things comes down to how it made you feel. Exactly. And personally I like it because it's the only thing, it's the only place in journalism where you're not, sub, where you're not forced to be objective. I hate being objective because being objective is... Being on sorry, the surface? I'm, sorry, I'm going to use a, a, a weird example. But uh, being objective is me saying, Olanya helped to pass the scrapping of the age limit, but he had his reasons. We want to know his reasons. And you're thinking, you're thinking you guys were raping the constitution, like you are utterly raping the constitution. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do, like, we need to see the reasons why you did it. You raped the constitution, period. Yeah. So when it comes to what's journalism and it being subjective and reviews and everything, you get that space where you say, I do not like this song because of A, B, C, and D. I do not need to come to the artist to tell me why he did A, B, C, and mm -hmm, D. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm, oh, mm -hmm. most of the things I usually mention when I'm writing my review, things that I know artists didn't intend, but are things they failed to do. I mean, you will not tell me why you wrote a story that doesn't make sense. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. You, you cannot start defending that, that I wrote it when it doesn't make sense because I wanted you to represent this. Like, it doesn't make sense. So that's, that's the, the empowerment that I feel like uh, arts journalism gives you over any other kind of journalism. I mean, someone is going to steal government money and you still have to give them a chance to explain themselves. Yet they stole money, like exactly. the receipts are there to show this money was stolen. Uh, money went missing or you gave us the wrong figures. The, the receipts are there, but for some reason, the other forms of journalism will want to hear their side of the story and you're thinking like so does that seriously? validate the stealing so, so I, I i actually feel like at times it gives them a chance to keep lying to us that's right for what's journalism we do not give you that chance <laughs> you say what you feel you say what you feel so in this space of journalism you have moments of going viral for yeah. two reasons. One, for being, for people being on your side and for not being on your side. Mm -hmm. How do you keep your mental health in check? And we're having people attacking your family background as well. Ah, okay, truth is uh, mental health at times is one of those things we don't even think about that much. Mm -hmm. Like I said, the very first time someone attacked my family it was the very first time I felt so bad because like it wasn't called for mm -hmm. and I think after that person attacked my family and a couple of people attacked them he went and deleted that comment but anyway how I cope personally I listen to a lot of music mm -hmm. when I'm home I sing a lot I still mess with people's songs <laughs> I still deconstruct people's songs and yeah. sing them in my own way the way how you I, want to hear them. The way I want to hear them. <laughs> just that I don't record it. I've, I think I've deconstructed a lot of our mainstream songs. Like, this thing can be better than <laughs> this. <laughs> you know, we would have trashed you if you came out with your recordings. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I deconstruct songs. I write a lot. I, I think... I actually, there are times when I cannot settle before I write something. Just like yesterday, when I did write about Olanya's contribution to the arts. Because mm -hmm. that's something I wanted to write the day they announced he had died. And I kind of didn't get the chance because I was very busy working on people's stories. So when I eventually got the chance yesterday, you'll be shocked like, I wrote all that when, because I was in an art exhibition and uh, when I sat down and they were explaining to us like, yeah, this does this, because I, really, I had already read the catalogue. Mm -hmm. I, I sat down and started typing a few things. Most of my long posts actually intended to be like, yeah, you might not know, but Olani actually contributed to, to the copyright law being passed. Most of the times, that's what I have in mind. 
and then it's like when I sit and start typing it, it's like like yeah, you might not know, mm -hmm. but of course I also didn't know because I I usually type the way I talk. The way you mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all my I don't know all my weaknesses in voice and everything like they stay in the way I write. Like yeah, you might not know, but hmm, how could you know? <laughs> Even when I go on off topic, like it still comes into yeah. the the post itself, and that just by that, I end up writing a very very long post that most of the times is never intended. And uh, the other thing people do not know is that I don't edit my posts. What? Yeah. Why? Because it's a post. It's not and it has an option of editing. Yes, I do not edit my posts. The only thing I I think I do is uh, if I've written like Olanya in this year did this before I post it you have to be sure I will fact check and see like did he actually do that in that year or year before like I'll fact check but the moment I post you don't go back I do not sometimes go back. typos happen you know most of the times I look through them to see okay is this the right spelling mm -hmm. like you'll be so shocked that much of the things I google <laughs> are the actual spellings of things yeah some, uh, some spellings are even obvious ones <laughs> i think that's what people don't really understand about writing yeah so 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 like by the time i post it i need to be sure about the facts i need to be sure about the spellings and then of course the language because there are times you you'll be like okay should should have i use uh was not or wasn't mm -hmm, like which one mm -hmm, communicates mm -hmm, better mm -hmm, so mm -hmm, i mm -hmm. make all those decisions before i actually post the i put up the post yeah so by the time i put up that post it's usually fine wow. so I, I don't edit it so so for me writing is one of the ways and then talking to people like talking to people like i've just started doing that just started talking to people because i've always been a loner like a lot just happens in my mind and kind of think about it with myself like okay does that work doesn't does it i've been thinking a lot just by myself and mm. then letting things go but these days i talk to people i talk to my mom more than i used to i think starting last year I don't even know how I started. Started last year. Yes, like we used to talk, but not like not like like here. Yeah, there is this is on my mind and it's going on. What's going on? Like we we never had such conversations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I feel like starting last year we started having more of those conversations. Yeah. Then of course my sister like you see my sister was very instrumental when when i was dropping out of university my sister was very instrumental because i dropped out of university because i did not you know i initially got law at mukono uh -huh. and i did not want to do law i so why did you apply for it i wanted no i i applied for it because i thought i wasn't going to get it <laughs> but <laughs> Because my mom wanted me to do law, so I was like, "Oh yeah, my goodness!" She she wants me, she wants me to do law. Let me let me just apply for it. <laughs> and they won't they, give it they, to me. They won't give it to me, and they'll be like, "Yeah, you see, they, they oh didn't give it goodness. to me." So my mom wanted me to do law, so I applied for law. They gave me law, and and <laughs> and then I did not want to do it. I I initially wanted to do MDD and uh, she did not really want MDD. So there was that whole thing like, you want this, <laughs> want this. Mm -hmm. So somehow the, our middle ground was, was Mascom, but Mascom became a middle ground later. I first did business computing. Wow. And business computing refused to compute. <laughs> <laughs> and so, when the whole mascom thing came out that was supported but of course my mom has been telling me but i think you should go back and do law should wow. go back and do law I, I think the reason she wants me to go back and do okay my dad was a lawyer mm, but sense. besides that 
I think I won a lot of cases in school. <laughs> a lot of cases that other kids started calling me to solve their cases when yeah, teachers yeah. got them. They were like, no, Andrew, like, I would not say anything until Andrew is here. Really? So, yeah, so, so my mom believed I had it in me. And she still believes I have it in me. So she keeps reminding me that to date. Like, you, you, you should consider it. And to look. date? Yeah, like... He, and you wow. see, there was a time she used to ask me, like, so, so when are you going to consider getting a real job? When I just started out oh, in journalism, because, real um, job. because truth is, when when you're a journalist and you're a freelancer, at times you do not really feel like you have a job. It's like, it's like you do not even know how you how much you're going to earn this month or next month. Mm -hmm. It's not really job security. So she would ask me, so when, when are you considering getting a real job? But then, of course, at around that time, I started winning some awards. <laughs> like, and, and what then, did she feel then, like? Then she, yeah, it's good. It's good. <laughs> it's good. But yeah, once in a while, she would remain. But, but that low thing. Yeah. Be, because, uh, okay, she genuinely believes in it. Uh, but now today, she's, she's, she's a mother to a dreadlocked. <laughs> Journalist who wants to make films, and <laughs> so so. But anyway, when when I left Mobs, yeah. where I was doing a uh, business computing, uh, my mom could not pay for me. Remember, she had lost her job, and uh, well, money wasn't really consistent with my mm, dad. Mm. And at that time, he had started becoming sick. So my sister chipped in, and she was like, "I'm going to pay for your." mass communication and we're like ah, okay let's do it and we went did it pass and somehow joined the newsroom in a very funny way uh, you know I tried to join all newsrooms and they all refused to take me mm -hmm. monitor refused new vision refused the observer refused and you've worked for all of them I've not worked for new vision you've not worked for new vision yes oh yeah so when every one of them refused, I kind of went home, started writing a blog. The very first place, so after doing my blog for some time, and I think it was noticed by one of the editors at Observer, and they started commenting on it. Mm -hmm. She was called Sarah Namulondo. So I go to Observer. I'm like, I'm here to see Sarah Namlo. <laughs> Remember that receptionist, the very first time I had gone there, yeah. when they did not even talk to me, she was like, we don't have any jobs. When I had walked in, she was like, we don't have any jobs. So I went back. This time when I went back, I knew her attitude. I knew she was the kind that tells you we don't have any jobs. Mm -hmm. So I came in and I was like, hi, I'm here to see Sarah Namlo. She was like, oh, so do you have an appointment? No, I don't, but I'm her young brother. Yeah, you're like, talking okay. about that. Get in. <laughs> so I get in and uh, actually I did not have an idea of what Sarah Namudo <laughs> looks like. That was a story that I found really funny. So I... <laughs> Yeah, so I get in and I don't have a slight idea of what Sarah Namlo looks like. I pass by her and then the receptionist is seeing me pass by her. <laughs> so I get to the office, she directed me to, I don't see her there and I come back and then I find the receptionist and I'm like, something is wrong here. So the receptionist is like, do you know Sarah Namlondo? Like, no, I actually don't. The good thing she was around and she was very helpful by the way it's after i found sarah that kind of things change because once she had read some of my stories on the blog mm -hmm. she gave me an email of the society editor at that time and too sad she died closely after that oh yeah yes by the time observer called me to join them sarah wasn't there oh. she, she had passed on still going back to I how did, you take care how, of how yourself. It's called decon, decon. There's something Michael always said about okay, they're acting, how they come out of because you can do a very tough scene and, yeah, and, and, yeah, and, and yeah. then you have to get out of it. There's a word you used, it's one I wanted to use. I don't know it either. Yeah, like, de, like decompressing or something like that. So anyway, how I do that, I usually talk to people. Like for my sister is because she's 
quite in, instrumental in how I ended up as a journalist. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I also have a friend like she she's she she always listens to. Why are you even laughing? No, she you always seem, listens seem, to me. Like how you say like, oh my god, did I just say it? Yeah. <laughs> what words do you have for us that you can leave for us? One, it's always your truth. You cannot be butchered or forced into taking other people's truths. Mm. Like there are things I've stood for online because I believe in them. Take an example when, when people kissed Elvis Mbonye's shoes and uh, there was a lot of fracas and then the same other people and I'm being a Catholic even when I say this, the Pope comes to Uganda and the same people that they were bashing, the ring. they had to kiss the ring. And then you're thinking like, at the, at the moment you're all kissing someone's attire. Oops. So I do not see, and I'm hot. Very many people came <laughs> up to me like, how can you say that it's different, it's what? It's but I, I stuck yeah. to my guns. And uh, one time we go to the village at home, my family is staunch <laughs> Catholic. And one of my uncles is like, when you think about it, you are very right about the Pope, the ring, and Bonnie and his shoes. Like you do not have to chicken out of your submission because the majority do not listen to you. It's the same thing with the... Your uncle said that? Yes. Oftentimes the families are bashing us for embarrassing them. It's the same thing with uh, Alex Mukulu and those boys that were smelling. Mm -hmm. Like, trust me, you're not going to go to an interview when you're smelling. But why is it okay for someone to come and audition when they are smelling? Because it's public and they should be talked to in private. Like, like why? So, like, these are all things I stood up, I, I stood up for, and people bashed me for them. And to date, if you woke me up from my sleep and you asked me if I still believe in them, I will tell you I still believe in what I said. Like you should always stand for something even if you're the only person that's believing in it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> my takeaway from this episode is that you should not let anyone box you in. Hard truths need to be told. So I still have podcast merchandise for you to buy and the proceeds from the sales make it easier for me to keep bringing you these conversations society is silent about. We have the magic mugs going at 35,000 shillings and the vacuum mugs, stroke, they're not mugs, vacuum cups going at 45,000. Check out for the payment link in the show notes and you can also check out our social media channels to be sure of what you are purchasing. Thank you for tuning into another episode of Hashtag with Nabuzi Chiwanuka. If you love what you heard, make sure you're subscribed to Hashtag with Nabuzi Chiwanuka in your podcast platform of choice and share it with your friends. Let them know that the content here on is for them. It is for all of us. Feel free to share your insights about what connected with you on social media and be sure to tag us. We are at Hashtag with Nabuzi Chiwanuka on Facebook and Instagram and on Twitter. Our handle is at HTNK Podcast. You can also reach us on our email, htnkpodcast at gmail.com. I really look forward to hearing your questions and reviews. And until next week, keep telling the hard truths.